foundations for the cathedral, which was known as St. Peter's Abbey until 1541, were first laid down in 1089 by Robert, Bishop of Hereford. It is difficult. Uh, it is difficult not in terms of skills, uh, because uh, most cathedral masons, uh, I, I, I would say, uh, we are I'm sorry to, to be smug, but uh, we, we are not bad. We're not bad uh, technically. Uh, we, we got good skills. Uh, if we are working in a cathedral, it means that we're, we're not too bad. But it's not enough. Skills are not enough. Uh, uh, we need to develop uh, that understanding of the very different culture a Norman Romanesque Mason was operating and a late perpendicular mason. It was a completely different world and uh, it produced very different uh, historic building and on that we have to, to be sympathetic with and understand the nature of the fabric. That will require the understanding of very different techniques of buildings and it's not a question of, of showing off and uh, always showing the best of skills every time. No, uh, we, it has to fit to, uh, to the context, to the historic context. And all skills have to adapt uh, to the historic context. And that's the proper job of people, craft people working on historic building. Great care is taken when designing a stained glass window to ensure that it can fit snugly into the allotted space. That about 85% of it is the original glass where it was meant to be. Now, we know that at different times there have been repairs and in the 1860s, when there was a big restoration program in the cathedral, uh, the window was taken out, re-leaded, and uh, has really been in a very good condition since then. Now, fairly recently, we had to do a lot of restoration and conservation work on it uh, because some stone fell out of the window about 10 years ago, and so the whole window had to be scaffolded, and the opportunity was taken to clean it. It was done by the conservator from Canterbury Cathedral, she used thousands of cotton buds and purified water just to clean the glass and to do some really high-tech conservation work on the paint on it. I'm sitting in a very comfortable armchair in the very comfortable organ loft here at Gloucester Cathedral. And to my right here is the organ console, so-called. This is uh, the selection of keyboards called manuals that operate all the pipes, which in this marvelous 17th century organ case to my left here. And Gloucester Cathedral has one of the most famous organs in the country. In my view, this organ is unusual, or certainly was very unusual when it was put in 30, 40 years ago, because the sounds and the styles are more continental, uh, and on the continent organs are not used really for accompanying choirs. I mean, in England their principal role in cathedrals is to accompany choirs. We um, want to welcome as many people to the cathedral as possible for concerts, events, uh, carol services at this time of year, um, as well as being a place of holiness, prayer and reflection for those ordinary visitors who come.